Hello everyone, welcome to today's video. So today we are going to discuss about heat exchangers, a very important domain of uh, chemical engineering, mechanical engineering in particular, heat exchangers. Uh, a question from heat exchanger now and then often appears in gate, often pops up in an interview, particularly the design of heat exchangers and the type of heat exchangers that exist depending on their flow pattern, on their area, uh, on the type of heat exchanger like in a counter flow or a co-flow, what is the exact profile of temperature that you can achieve and mostly when it comes to gate or even to interviews which are critical in terms of heat transfer, uh, that is companies that give much focus on heat transfer problems, they might ask numericals about it and also the gate questions mostly they go for uh, numericals for sure, they do ask multiple numerical questions uh, pertaining to heat exchangers. In the industry also there are a lot of topics that come from heat exchanger where you have to deal with numerous numericals and two basic formulas I'm going to discuss in this video. It's going to be a little lengthy but very interesting which will make you solve all, the help you solve all the questions uh, regarding heat exchangers. Uh, any question from the domain of heat exchangers can be solved by using two formulas which I'm going to deal with. So uh, firstly talking about the type of heat exchangers, uh, I'm going to make a separate video explaining all the types of heat, heat exchangers in details. Uh, if you need then one by one taking individual heat exchangers like plated exchangers, shell tube heat exchangers, plated exchangers with fins, without fins, so finned and unfinned heat exchangers. But today we will have a general overview of how does a heat exchanger works. So basically depending on the flow pattern, heat exchangers are basically of two types, uh, uh, three types rather, uh, counter, co-current, counter current and cross current. So as we know, as the name suggests, counter current, what is a heat exchanger first of all, let me tell you. A heat exchanger is, as the name suggests, a device that lets the exchange of heat between two fluids, two flowing medium. And as we know that the heat transfer is basically of three types, that is conduction, conduction, convection, convection and radiation. Now the later, that is radiation, occurs at a very high temperature. Radiation occurs at a very high temperature when the temperature is above 400 degrees Celsius. But for a normal moving fluid, radiation is not that dominating a factor. Conduction definitely plays a minute role, but the heat exchanger design or heat exchanger principle is basically based on flowing medium or flowing fluid heat transfer. And that is a virtue uh, of its uh, convective heat transfer uh, coefficient, that is by convection. Whenever there are two fluids flowing against or with each other, coming in indirect contact or in direct contact with each other, we know that there is a heat exchange between the two mediums by virtue of its convective heat transfer when in the media, media particles uh, going in turbulent flow share their energies with one another. So it's a convective heat transfer plus a conductive heat transfer in a heat exchanger but the convective heat transfer being more dominative any flowing medium, any flowing medium remember my friends has a convective heat transfer as the highest dominating heat transfer among the three types of heat transfer. So the convective heat transfer is the dominant most in a flowing medium heat transfer. Now, when we talk of heat exchanger, heat exchanger can be direct contact type, can be indirect contact type heat exchanger. That is a heat exchanger design where now as we talk about the heat exchanger, as we go into the domain of heat exchanger, I would like to describe the structure of a heat exchanger. So heat exchanger is basically two fluids, two fluids flowing. One is the hot fluid, hot fluid as the name suggests at a higher temperature and one is the cold fluid, cold fluid which is at a lower temperature and as we know heat will get transferred whenever there is a temperature gradient or a temperature difference from the hot fluid to the cold fluid. So the driving force in this case is the temperature difference and as long as this temperature dis uh, difference exists there is going to be a heat transfer occurring between the cold fluid and the hot fluid due to the temperature difference between the two. Now they may be separated, they may be separated with a membrane in between that is they are not coming in direct contact to each other which is uh, or they may come in direct contact to each other that is 
gaining heat and then losing heat. So these type of heat exchangers have two types uh, uh, depending on the contact or non-contact process. One is recuperative heat transfer, one is regenerative heat transfer. Now I am going to talk about recuperative and regenerative in a separate video but today we are going to discuss the general heat exchanger problems that industry generally faces and how to solve them. The crux of heat exchanger numericals. So uh, the basis that we need to cover is what is a heat exchanger as I have already explained. Now the three flow patterns counter, co and cross. Now what is counter? Counter current heat transfer is a heat transfer process uh, wherein heat exchanger wherein the hot fluid and the cold fluid are flowing counter to each other. That is the cold fluid is approaching from there and the hot fluid is going from here. So there should be a, always a heat transfer between the hot fluid and cold fluid to keep the heat transfer going on between the two uh, fluid sources. One interesting thing about counter current heat transfer we are going to discuss when we are going to draw the curves of counter current heat transfer to understand the numerical approach. Uh, one is co-current uh, heat exchanger. Co-current heat exchanger, co-current heat transfer, as the name suggests, the hot and the cold fluid move in a parallel flow, not an anti-parallel, but a parallel flow, wherein the hot fluid and cold fluid enter simultaneously and leave the uh, chamber simultaneously. So throughout, the temperature difference between the two fluids will keep on decreasing as they proceed. The temperature difference between the two fluids will keep on decreasing. That is, I'm entering this cold fluid, hot fluid at 190, I'm entering this cold fluid at 90, and in the midway, they are going to heat exchange and then would exit at a common temperature of uh, supposedly uh, this is exiting at 150 and this is exiting at uh, 130 so it has gained heat from 90 to 130 it has lost its heat from 190 to uh, 150 so they are exiting simultaneously with a lesser delta t in between the two streams at the end of the heat exchanger this is what a co current heat exchanger is all about another is the cross current heat exchanger cross current heat exchanger is neither uh, parallel nor anti parallel this is the hot fluid coming down and this is the cold fluid that is punched in the system. So this kind of a system is a cross current heat exchanger. But cross current heat exchangers are not that dominantly visible in the industry. What is dominantly visible is counter current and co-current heat exchanger and the most common type is counter current heat exchanger. So if they ask you uh, what is the most common type of heat exchanger, it is counter current heat exchanger and why is it the most common heat exchanger, we are going to come to that as well. So the types of heat exchanger, there are many, as I said, unfinned, finned, recuperative, regenerative, but if we talk about the heat exchangers that are predominantly used in the industry, industrial heat exchanger, industrial heat exchangers, we are going to heat to all the heat exchangers, HXs. Heat exchangers stand for HXs. There's a short form of engineering, short form of heat exchanger. So these are the two types of heat, heat exchanger that are predominantly used in the industry. One is the plate heat exchanger, another is the shell and tube heat exchanger. So we are going to talk about the two types of heat exchanger, how do they exactly look about, not into the intricate details of the same, but the type of the heat exchanger. So a shell and a plate heat exchanger, first of all, we are going to talk about. We are also going to discuss about the numerical formulas that I have already told you. So talking about plate heat exchanger, what happens is, this is one plate, this is one plate, this is one plate, this is one plate. And they are coded differently. Now what happens is the cold fluid, the cold fluid enters this plate, goes to the third plate, exits it, goes to the fifth plate, and this is the motion of the cold fluid. This is the motion of the cold fluid. You see, this is the cold fluid. Now the hot fluid, what happens to the hot fluid is, hot fluid enters from this plate, goes and enters this plate and then goes and enters the another plate. So you see that every alternative plate has a cold fluid and every alternative plate has a hot fluid. So in a plate and frame heat exchanger, what happens the frames are basically having the hot fluids, the plates are having the cold fluids and there is an indirect heat transfer between um, the hot fluid and the cold fluid. The material of this plate depends on the medium that you are using. It can be stainless steel, it can be mild steel, it can be cast iron depending on the uh, like uh, the uh, material that you are passing through the uh, hot side and the cold side definitely but why I am saying this steel steel and iron mostly because there are they are high conductors of heat energy so the convective heat transfer is going to be fully transferred to the second fluid irrespective of the uh, thin sheet that is there in between if it is an insulating sheet it's not going to be transferred so a high conductivity of the sheets in between is important so the high conductivity of the plate sheets are very important so uh, it's like every alternative uh, uh, boxes or slots contain hot fluids and every alternative boxes or slots contain the cold fluids flow. 
So due to the continuous flow, there is a heat exchange between the plates. And what is the advantage of a plate heat exchanger? Why is it readily used in industry? Plate heat exchanger, remember my friends, plate heat exchanger has variable area. Area is variable. That is, if I just increase the number of plates in the same, uh, like, uh, what do you call it? In the same uh, dimensions, if I increase the number of plates, just reducing the gapping between uh, two plates, what happens is there is a higher fluid flow, and there is a greater uh, heat transfer uh, area available. So area is variable and the heat transfer area can be increased to increase the heat transfer. So this can be controlled. The area is variable and it can be controlled in a plate heat exchanger within the same dimensions. That is not increasing the total area of the entire structure but increasing the number of plates by reducing the gap in between the two. So what this number of plates, more number of plates would do, first of all it would increase the heat transfer area. It will increase the heat transfer area if you increase the number of plates. Firstly, secondly, since the gap between the two plates is made narrow, narrower, so what happens is the turbulence of the fluid is also very frequent. Turbulence of the fluid is also very high. So turbulence, turbulence, turbulence is high. And we know when turbulence increases, convective heat transfer coefficient, convective heat transfer coefficient increases, and hence the heat transfer as a whole increases. So in plate heat exchanger, this is the clear advantage, the variable area heat exchanger and turbulence. This is the most common question that is often asked in the interview that area variable heat exchanger, what do you mostly prefer? It's going to be a plate heat exchanger. Now coming to shell and tube heat exchangers. How does a shell and tube heat exchanger look like? Shell and tube heat exchanger, as the name suggests, is looking something like this. So this is my tube and this is my shell. So, tube side fluid is flowing in this direction, maybe call it a counter current flow. This is a, a single cylindrical pipe or single, uh, like what do you call it, uh, single pass maybe, uh, single cylindrical type, uh, type heat exchanger. This is simply a tube, this is the shell and there are two fluids flowing in opposite directions to each other, this is counter current. Now, talking about the pass, so this is a singular pass heat exchanger, wherein there is a single inlet and a single outlet. What is a double pass? Double pass is two inlets and two outlets. Striking and going back. Striking and going back. So this is the thing. So this is uh, what do you call a shell and tube heat exchanger. Now there is a very very popular question here. Very popular question. In a shell and tube heat exchanger, I would like to ask you this question. Which fluid do you think, the hot fluid or the cold fluid, which fluid do you think should be passed from the tube side? It's a very common sense question. It should be passed from the tube side or the shell side. Which should contain the hot fluid? Because the heat exchanger area is constant. The heat transfer coefficient is constant. The delta T is constant. So the heat exchange Q is equals to UA delta T or MCP delta T. Since all parameters are constant, it should be constant. That would be the first reflection of the problem. That uh, heat transfer would be constant irrespective of whether you put the tube side fluid as hot or the shell side fluid as hot. But that is not the case. That is not the case my friends. The answer to this problem that which fluid should be passing from the tube side, which fluid should be passing from the shell side is very very commonly asked in the industry, very commonly asked. Pause the video and think about it. Very general a common sense question. I hope you have found the answer by now. Uh, the answer to this question is the hot fluid is generally preferred. The hot fluid is generally preferred through the tube side. Now why is it so? It is so because the tube side is always inside, inside the shell. So what happens is, this is the shell, this is my tube. So any type of a heat conduction or convection or radiation from the central source, like supposedly this is my tube and this is my shell. From this tube, any fluid flowing, any fluid flowing will have a heat transfer to the outer source. 
to the outer source. It will try to cylindrically lose its heat from its heat conducting surface area. This is the heat conducting surface area. And it will try to leave, lose its heat in all directions. Now, if it is in the shell side, it will try to lose its heat both inside and outside. But if it is in the tube side, there is no inside. The fluid is flowing from there only. It has only op one option that is to give it out. But if it is on the shell side, it will lose. The fluid will try. The shell side fluid will try to will try to lose its heat on both sides. If it's a hot fluid, it will try to heat, lose its heat on both sides. And hence, a hot fluid is never preferred through the shell side, though the shell is insulated. There is an insulating material across the shell, but still it is not preferred to keep a hot fluid in the shell because no material is 100% insulating. So there will be some conductive loss or radiative loss outside the shell. But if it's in the tube, the entire heat of the hot fluid will be utilized by the cold fluid. So this is the thing. This is the thing. Shell and tube heat exchanger. Tube side. Tube side. Hot fluid. And automatically shell side. Cold fluid. This is the first principle. So we know this is the shell and tube heat exchanger. And we have talked about the passes. One pass, singular pass, double pass heat exchanger. These are the passes of the heat exchangers. And what is the shell and tube heat exchanger contain? Shell and tube heat exchangers contains baffles. Now, this is one common question that is often asked in the interview: that when the when the shell side fluid is made to pass through baffles, it follows some motion like this. Follows some motion like this. Now, what does the baffle in a heat exchanger do? The baffle in a heat exchanger basically gives, like, supports the vibration. First, uh, like, one of the purposes is to support the vibration and give a support to the tubes of the heat exchanger, to the tubes of the heat exchanger to hold the tubes in position. The baffles are given. The, another important purpose, the most important purpose, is again to increase the turbulence. Again to increase the turbulence. If a fluid is flowing straight without baffles, the turbulence is going to be less. So the heat transfer coefficient, convective heat transfer coefficient is going to be less. Now you increase the turbulence, formation of eddies will take place, eddy currents, that is turbulating eddy currents will take place across the fluid. And due to this eddies, heat transfer coefficient increases when you introduce baffles. So the baffles, first of all, supports the tubes, secondly, increases the convective heat transfer coefficient by increasing the turbulence. This is one common question that is once again asked in the so remember this. So variable area plate heat exchanger, shell and tube heat exchanger, one pass, two pass, we have discussed why the hot fluid should be flowing through the tube side, we have discussed what is the use of baffles, we have discussed all of these questions are very common in the interviews. Now coming to like the graphs of this shell and tube heat exchanger, how do they exactly look like? For a co-current flow, co-current flow, let us discuss the graph. I'm going to rub this. Industrial heat exchangers, co-current flow graph looks something like this. So what is this? This is flowing simultaneously. And what is this? This is the length of the heat exchanger. Along the length of the heat exchanger, what is the temperature profile? Now this graph is very, very commonly asked in the interviews. Very commonly asked in the interviews. Interview, important question. Very important question in the interview. Uh, this particular heat exchanger co-current flow and counter-current flow graphical representation of the temperature profile with the length of the heat exchanger. Now what is happening? The hot fluid is entering at high temperature pH in. The cold fluid is entering at a lower temperature Tc in and throughout the hot fluid there is a heat transfer from the hot fluid to the cold fluid. So the Q is flowing in this direction and hence because the temperature this temperature is lower than this temperature and Q obviously will heat will obviously flow from a higher temperature to a lower temperature. So the cold fluid gains heat and the temperature keeps on increasing in stages as it moves along the length of the tube and the hot fluid keeps on losing heat and the temperature keeps on dropping along the tube. At one point of time the approach temperature, the delta T keeps on decreasing. The delta T was the highest here and delta T keeps on decreasing as we proceed. So delta T keeps on decreasing as the length of the heat exchanger increases in a co-current flow. 
now talking of the counter current flow counter current as the name suggests one again the fluid will be flowing flowing in opposite directions opposite directions and the cold fluid once again will start gaining heat but this time moving in a opposite direction so this will be something like this and the hot fluid will have a profile of something like this so you see so you see that at this point the delta t has to be maintained and at this point the delta t has to be maintained once again the hot fluid is losing heat to the cold fluid and the temperature is decreasing but this time the exit temperature that is tc out and tc th in are in contact and here tc in and th out are in contact so this has a certain advantage what is the advantage advantage is as you can see in this case the outlet temperature of the cold fluid can be higher than the outlet temperature of the hot fluid so remember my friends remember my friends if supposedly there is a question where the hot fluid is at a 190 degree celsius and the cold fluid is at supposedly uh, the hot fluid is coming in at 190 degrees Celsius and uh, exits at about 100 degrees Celsius supposedly and the cold fluid comes in at comes in at 80 degrees Celsius and we will have to heat the fluid heat the fluid to 120 or 130 degrees Celsius you cannot you cannot do it in a uh, what do you call it? Co-current heat transfer. Because in co-current, the T cold always throughout the heat exchanger, throughout the heat exchanger is always less than the T hot. Throughout it is less. But here, here, at, at a particular length, at a particular length, obviously, this will be lesser than Tc will be lesser than Th. But TC out, TC out, this is TC out is less than TH out. But here TC out can be greater than TH out. So whenever this condition exists, you can be asked a question that a hot fluid is entering at a certain temperature, exiting at 100 degrees Celsius. A cold fluid is entering at a certain temperature and exiting at 120 degrees Celsius. What kind of heat exchanger is this? Only the TC out, TC out and TH out are given. Can you state what kind of heat exchanger is this? What kind of heat exchanger can you use in this case? Obviously, obviously, obviously you will have to go for counter current heat exchanger. Because in a cold current heat exchanger, TC out, outlet temperature of the cold fluid will never be higher than the outlet temperature of the hot fluid. But here it can happen so. It may happen so, and that's why the counter current heat exchanger has an advantage, has an advantage over the co current heat exchanger, and that's why it is preferred more easily in an industry, the counter current heat exchanger. So, having explained these curves, the evaporator and the condenser are also heat exchangers, let me tell you. The evaporator and the condenser are also heat exchangers. How does the profile look? Since it is an evaporator, since it is an evaporator, we know that the temperature of the evaporating fluid will not change, but the cold fluid will keep on gathering heat without the temperature change. That is, the latent heat will be absorbed by the cold fluid to increase its temperature. So the cold fluid profile looks something like this, ever increasing, and the hot fluid profile will look something like this in a co-current flow. In a counter current flow, in a counter current flow, this is going to be something like this. The cold fluid entering from here at a lower temperature and exiting here at a higher temperature. And this is a constant temperature, TH, maintained throughout. This is evaporation. So the latent heat, latent heat of vaporization, evaporation, or rather, uh, should I, uh, sorry, I, I, I certainly am mistaken on this. This is condensation. This is not an evaporator, this is a condenser. So what is happening? It is a condensation process wherein 
the hot fluid is losing its heat to the cold fluid and it's not cooling down it's losing its latent heat so lambda it is losing lambda and it is increasing the temperature of the cold fluid similarly similarly for a evaporator for an evaporator what will happen the cold fluid will be at a constant temperature increasing its heat that is evaporating changing its phase and the hot fluid will keep on losing its temperature so the hot fluid will be transferring heat to the cold fluid and the cold fluid will absorb this as the latent heat of vaporization and will evaporate evaporation so this might also be asked condensation and evaporation evaporator and condenser for a counter current flow it will be something like this the hot fluid temperature coming down and the cold fluid temperature not increasing but gathering its heat as latent heat of vaporization so this is a constant temperature that is the boiling temperature this is a constant temperature that is the condensation temperature tc so this is what is happening in a condenser and an evaporation now coming to the final confusion of heat exchangers a very important thing if you have to solve any industrial problem of heat exchanger or any gate problem of heat exchanger you need to remember two formulas in a heat exchanger i am taking a case of a like a shell and tube heat exchanger simple cylindrical pipe shell and tube heat exchanger maybe wherein the hot fluid is flowing from the tube side and the cold fluid is coming from the shell side so let us take this section as 1 and let us take this section as 2 so hot fluid is entering at ph 1 exiting as ph 2 where th2 is definitely lesser than th1 cold fluid entering as tc2 and exiting as tc1 so remember my friends this formula is very very important heat transfer in a particular designed heat exchanger is q is equals to m of cold fluid into cp of cold fluid into tc2 minus tc tc1 rather minus tc2 tc1 being higher than tc2 this is the heat gained by the cold fluid heat gained by the cold fluid mass of the cold fluid mass flow rate flow not constant mass but flow rate into cp that is specific heat capacity of the cold fluid and finally the temperature difference that is it enters at tc2 exits at tc1 this is the amount of heat gained by the cold fluid which is again equal to mh cph th1 minus th2 so heat is lost this is the amount of heat that is lost by the hot fluid now this two temperatures this two temperatures once again i'm telling you m c c p c m dot h c p h t h minus t h2 this is the heat transfer and this two are equal to u a l m p d this is the virtue of a heat exchanger this is the these are the virtues this is the virtue of the fluid Oh, hot fluid. This is by virtue of the cold fluid, and this is by virtue of the heat exchanger. Now, this never changes. This never changes. These three will always be equal to each other, and this is the total heat that will be transferred in a heat exchanger. Now, what is U A L M T D? What is U A L M T D? Very important. Very very important questions frequently to come in interviews and get from particularly this particular formula. Just remember this. U A L M T D has a separate derivation. Has a separate derivation. U A L M T D will be U is nothing but U is nothing but. Remember this. This is the heat transfer coefficient. Heat transfer coefficient. I'm writing this as H T C. It is nothing but one by one by H one A plus that is hot fluid uh, specific. Uh, like hot fluid uh, convective heat transfer coefficient into area of heat transfer plus ln r1 by r2 that is for the tube by 2 pi lk plus 1 by h2a so this total
thermal heat transfer coefficient across a heat exchanger is a virtue of its convective heat transfer coefficient of the individual fluids that are flowing. The conductive coefficient of the material of the tube that we are using and the radius, the outer radius and the inner radius of the tube that we are using. Basically, basically making it a formula, remember this, making it a formula, something like this. If I draw, this is the tube and this is the thickness. So if I elongatedly draw it, this will be kind of the tube. This will be my R1 from the center. Maybe R2 from the center and this is my R1 from the center. So ln R1 by R2. This is for the particular tube. Remember, this is the center and this is another part of the tube. So it's basically I'm magnifying this tube thickness and showing it. The conductive heat transfer like the coefficient is K. Conductivity is K. Fluid flowing in this region has a what do you call it? Convective heat transfer coefficient of H1 and fluid flowing in this area convective heat transfer coefficient of H2 within the tube. So this is the virtue of the fluids flowing in the region. So this is the overall heat transfer coefficient. Overall, overall heat transfer coefficient. What is LMTD? Most importantly, guys. Most importantly, remember this. LMTD, that is log mean temperature difference, is nothing but if I draw the heat exchanger once again, this is my shell side, this is my tube side, it's entering from the tube side at TH1, this is the first section, it's exiting at TC1, it's entering as TC2, it's exiting at TH1, TH2, sorry. LMTD is nothing but TH2 minus T. C2 that is for the particular exit point or you can call it the entry point for the cold fluid exit point for the hot fluid particular temperature difference here that is delta T here delta T2 minus TH1 minus TC1 by ln of ln of TH2 minus TC2 by TH1 minus Tc1. So basically it is nothing but delta T2, that is temperature difference for the section 2, minus delta T1, temperature difference for the section 1, by ln of delta T2 by delta T1. Basically every problem in the industry, there will be two unknowns, two equations to solve these questions. The three equations that I am going to write here, very very important people, very very important. Finally, Last but not the least, Q is equals to MC, CPC, TC1 minus TC2 is equals to MH, CPH, TH2 minus TH1 is equals to U into A into delta T2 minus delta T1 by ln of delta T2 by delta T. One. Solving these three equations, every problem will be solved. Somewhere you will not have this mass and not have one of the temperatures. Somewhere you will have the mass but two temperatures are known, two outlet temperatures are known. You will have to strike and solve the two equations and two unknowns problem. This is basically two equations and two unknowns. Every time you will be given questions like this and you need to solve them. Either, either the temperatures will be unknown, two temperatures, the mass flow rates can be unknown. Mostly these two parameters are unknown. Sometimes you know the mass flowing from both the sides, but you do not know, you know the inlet temperatures of both the fluids, but you do not know the outlet temperatures. There is a heat exchanger where you know this inlet temperature, you know this inlet temperature, you know this mass, you know this mass, you know this temperature, but you do not know what is the temperature here. You do not know what is the temperature here. So you simply solve this. This is equals to this one equation. Where do you know MC, you know MH, you know TC1 that is entering uh, uh, fluid. This is uh, one section. So TC1 may be entering uh, cold fluid temperature and entering hot fluid temperature. So TH2 is known and TC2 is unknown. TH1 is unknown. 
you get this one equation, you get this one equation by virtue of the heat exchanger, this will be known. That is overall heat transfer coefficient for a heat exchanger is constant, area of the heat exchanger is constant, and what is unknown is once again th2 and th1. Once again, and you solve the equation. Every problem will be solved as such. So this I think will conclude the day of discussion for heat exchangers, heat exchangers, uh, type of heat exchangers and the numericals associated with it. Mm, that I think uh, will bring us to a close of the conversation and uh, thank you very much. If you liked our channel, share it, subscribe it to your friends, uh, share it to your friends, subscribe to our channel. We will keep on making content more like this.